Hey everybody! Hey family, Irish Guy JG, Jesse here. It is Friday. I hope you guys made it through the week okay. I hope everybody's doing okay. I know I got a few brothers out there that are that are struggling and, and um, Daniel, I love you man. I, you got this brother. Do not think for one second that you do not have this. The Lord has got your side. You have favor in God's eyes. I know. I prayed. I can feel it. I can feel it. I talked to the Father, and you have favor in His eyes. You just need to make the right decisions, man, and you are doing that. So I commend you, and I pray, and I love you, brother. Keep it up. Yesterday we read in John 14, and what did we learn? Ah, uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through Him. That is very important. And if you guys read the Gospels, then you'll know that Jesus came, he was born, he lived a sinless, blameless life, and then he was executed and, and, and died a criminal death. A very bad, extremely excruciating death. But then he, was, he rose from the dead, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will return again. We don't know the hour or the time, but he will come back for his children, for his people, me and you, true believers of Jesus Christ. Those who have accepted him into their heart and have a relationship with him and talk to him every day, those people, we will be redeemed. We will go back, and we will... We will we will go to the house he has built. So yesterday we read in John 14. Today we're going to be reading in John 15. And I am going to... He teaches about the Holy Spirit. So listen up. 16, sorry. Now I'm going to I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you who ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things. You are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because man do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. I, and re, in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. But when he, the truth of spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. John 16. Very important stuff. If you guys haven't gotten in the Gospels, please read the Gospels. It's, it just gives you a renewed sense of, of Spirit. It just The Holy Spirit jumps out at me when I read these things because it gives us Jesus' words, things that he spoke from his heart from his mind, from his soul, to us, for us to read, digest, and then walk it out. That's what we do. That's what we should all be doing. Wow. I really hope you guys all had a good week. A little rainy today, but hey, we got a lot of work done this week. Uh, things are going good on the job site. We got a new guy starting on Monday, so new, new fresh faces, new people to... Uh, to preach to right to show that li that a life in recovery is possible it is it is it is and i want to i want to also say a little something too that there are still a lot of people out there still sick and suffering millions upon millions but some of these people that are choosing a, a road of recovery which we're going to read about today in our in our uh recovery literature it's very important that we pray for them because we want to turn hearts towards God and away from the devil and away from those addictions that hinder our life and our, our walk with Jesus. So let's open up and let's read on October 15th in just for today, NA. Choices. We did not choose to become addicts. When we were growing up, all of us had dreams. Every child has heard a relative or neighbor ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? Excuse me, I'm waiting for the sirens to pass. Ambulance. Even if some of us didn't have elaborate dreams of success, most of us dreamed of work, families, and a future of dignity and respect. But no one asked, do you want to be a drug addict when you grow up? Of course not, right? We didn't choose to become addicts and we didn't we cannot choose to stop and we cannot choose to stop being addicts. Yeah, see, some of this stuff I, I tend to disagree with. There's something in the other reading that I disagreed with the other day, and I have to tend to a, a, a disagree with this, okay? Forgive me if you don't, but just listen to this. We didn't choose to become addicts, and we cannot choose to stop being addicts. I disagree with that. We have the disease of addiction. We are not responsible for having it. 
but we are responsible for our recovery. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Having learned that we are sick people and that there is a way of recovery, we can move away from blaming circumstances or ourselves into living the solution. And that's what's more important, right? We didn't choose addiction, but we can choose recovery. Amen. That just contradicts what they say right there. We didn't choose to become addicts, and we cannot choose to be, stop being addicts. We didn't choose the addiction, but we can choose recovery. There's contradictions in these books, you guys. I get it. I get it. Bear with me. Uh, a lot of the substance in these books is spot on. It's, it's, it's good, spiritual, uh, faith-based material. But this stuff, it can have a little bit of discrepancies in here. And we just work with them. And if I'm calling it out and I'm exposing it for what it is, we can come t together in agreement in the comments or whatever that some of this stuff isn't, isn't right, okay? So just for today, I choose recovery, amen. I'm not saying I'm any better than any of the people that wrote these books. I'm just simply saying that I have, I have disagreements with some of the stuff that's written in these books. We can choose to stop being addicts. Millions and thousands of people do it every day. I chose to stop being a drug addict 10 years ago. I, stopped, I chose to stop being an a alcoholic almost three years ago. It can be done. And a lot of you guys that I know on here that I talk with on and off YouTube are choosing not to be alcoholics, are choosing not to be drug addicts. So it can be done. And we are doing it together through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I am deeply grateful to AA for what it has done for me in regaining my sobriety and opening up an entirely new life for me. AA, the body of Christ, has made it possible for me to carry on interests, other interests in business and in various other associations with people. It has made a full life possible for me and you. It would perhaps be wrong if all my activities were limited to AA work. It has made me a well-rounded life possible for me in work, in play, and in hobbies of various kinds. But will I desert AA because of this? Will I accept a diploma and become a graduate of AA? Do I realize that I could have nothing worthwhile without AA? Meditation for today. There is only one way to get a full satisfaction from life, and that is to live the way you believe God wants you to live. Amen. By reading his word. Live with God in that secret place of the spirit that you will have a feeling of being on the right road. You will have a deep sense of satisfaction. The world will have meaning, and you will have a place in the world. Work to do that counts in the eternal order of things. Amen. Many things will work for you and with you, as long as you feel you are on God's side. Amen. Talk to God. Pray to God. Talk to Him. He will talk back. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may have a sense of the eternal value of the work I do. I pray that I may not only work for now, but also for eternity. Repeat. Rewind. <laughs> I pray that I may have a sense of the eternal value of the work I do. I pray that I may not only work for now, but also for eternity. Amen. Some good stuff. See? See? 360 out of 365 days in those books, of those daily readings, are good. Concrete, spiritual advice, wisdom, guidance, whatever you want to call it. But it's, it's food for thought, you guys. It's, it's things to pick up. And then apply to your walk. If you're suffering with drugs, get the book and read it every day. It does wonders. If you're suffering from alcoholism, get the AA book. Read it every day. 24 hours a day is what it's called. It is, it's, it's an amazing thing. And if you're suffering with sin, get the big book. Get the big book. And if you don't have one, I'll send one to you free of charge if you're in the USA. Get the big book. I'm telling you, it does wonders. So we got drugs, we got alcohol, and then we got everything else in between, including those things we learn to abstain from and live a life in recovery from the Bible, okay? I'm not going to beat it up too hard. I'm not going to beat that drum too hard, but I just cannot get enough of God's Word and what it tells us and teaches us. So now I would like to pray. And I would also, at the end of that, I would also like to tell you about a new channel that I found. So before I do that, let's pray for the still sick and suffering, okay? Oh. <sighs> Whew, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, I thought I heard it too. Father God, I just pray that you fill every person's heart that is still sick and suffering out there with an ounce of hope, Father. Fill their cup up with, with inspiration, guidance, hope, reassurance, refuge, everything that comes with a relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing God the Creator, everything that comes with that, Father, I just ask you to fill those people's hearts with some hope, some hope, Father. Turn their hearts towards you. Show them something on their path 
show something on their walk, show something in, in their everyday life that, that they can relate to finding Jesus and finding recovery and abstaining from the things that they put in their bodies that makes their mind unwell, Father. I pray for the people that are choosing recovery over addiction. I pray for those who are, are continuing the fight and have been continuing the fight. And I also pray for people that have lost loved ones to this disease. And I, I, I honor their commitment to trying to teach others about a life of recovery um, due to the consequences that others have faced. And, and we also, Father, ask you for wisdom and guidance. We also ask you for all the things to say and work through us and work through these channels, work through some of these channels that are that are displaying what 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 you've taught us and reading from what you've taught and just give us the words to say and give us the give us the um, the motivation to do these videos every day, Father, and just put it in our hearts that it's an important job and important work to try and help others. And in Jesus' mighty name, I pray all this. So. I'm, I'm simply taken aback and astonished every day how God does something for me. He shows me something every day, every single day. But you have to be looking for it, right, guys? You can't, be, you can't have your head down and your blinders on. You have to be wide-eyed, alert, aware, paying attention to every word, to every action, to every thought to everything you do because there are little ripples and there's repercussions in this world that we live in and when we're unkind to somebody when we're we're not compassionate we're not loving uh we get cut off on the road we you know who knows bad thoughts uh, being manipulative being deceptive using drugs and alcohol doing anything that could hinder our walk with god is bad and i don't need to tell you guys all that you guys all know that but there are people out there that are still sick and suffering and i just have such a huge heart for those people and and especially the people that have chosen recovery over addiction so i want to tell you about a channel it's called just and true it's he's in hawaii what an amazing place to live and work he's a guy like me that works construction and 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 kind of like a a large and in charge type of guy uh, on the scene making it happen every day and that's what i do and so i can relate to him and i just want you guys to check out his channel because he shared a couple of my videos lately in the last couple of weeks and I know that we've gotten viewers on this channel because of that and subscribers. And I want to tell my subscribers, well, go, go over there and check it out. I will put a link in the description below. Um, almost 13 minutes here. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to keep you so long. But uh, this is important stuff. And it's stuff that's on my heart. And I know that God's calling me to, to say some of this stuff. I know I just do the, the readings every day. And I, I shut the camera off. And I, I, and I was like, oh, maybe I should have said that. But, you know, I, I usually don't. I usually am fine with just reading these things with you guys and, and sharing that time with, with God's word with you guys and and knowing that so many of you are out there being appreciative of, 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 of the channel and, and, and what God does through the channel. And what I ultimately want is for people to find inspiration, hope, encouragement through God's word and through uh, spiritual recovery literature because, you know what, if we have a relationship with God, we can turn our lives around. It is possible. I have a family. I have things going for me. And all of that is possible because of what God has done for me. He's given me the gift of recovery. And I've accepted it. And for so many years, I didn't accept it. I just threw it to the wayside. And other people picked it up and, and ran with it. And I watched, I watched friends and family get into recovery. And, and now, thank God and thank you, Jesus, I am one of the people that accepted the gift and my life has ultimately been changed because of it. So some of you guys that are still sick and suffering, um, Daniel, I love you. And there's a few other people that are, are, are in my inner, inner circle that are choosing, uh, unfortunately, addiction over recovery. But there, there's, there's another person in my life that chose recovery over addiction and is getting the help. And I commend you and I love you and I fully support you. I'm not going to share that person's name on here because I don't think it's fair to that person um, just quite yet. But, you know, maybe someday I'll share with you guys. But uh, I just, addiction is real out there. So many people suffer from it. Some people suffer from sin. Some people, you know, sin, addiction is sin. But some people suffer from biting their nails too much. And they think that's bad. You know, it's, we have different levels of, of addic addiction and we have different different levels of sin and when you get into addiction, you get into a whole new world of sin and bad thoughts and being manipulative, deceptive, 
And once you rid yourself of alcohol and drugs, you kind of get a renewed sense of spirit, a renewed sense of well-being, and you kind of look at life a little differently with a clearer lens and a clearer mind, especially if you're, you're abstinent like I am from everything. I don't smoke marijuana. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't do pills. I don't do any kind of over-the-counter anything, anything. I don't do anything. In fact, I've been much more healthier lately by drinking a heck of a lot more water, getting rid of the Red Bulls and the sugar and the candy bars and all that stuff, and I feel worlds better because I know that God's trying to teach me a healthier way of life. And so how can I go preach to other people about living healthy if I'm sucking on a Red Bull right around the corner or, or, or puffing on a cigarette and somebody, you know what I mean? It just it doesn't help to be like that. So. I want to be an example to my kids, to my wife, to my family, to all the people out there that are still sick and suffering. And I still plan to, to try and become a recovery coach. It didn't, it didn't really fall into place like I wanted to, to this fall. Um, I wasn't able to, to get into the program, uh, the recovery coach program, like I thought I was going to. And so, you know what, it's God's timing and it's God's will. And I'm not going to sit down here and say boo-hoo for me. It's not boohoo for me. I have a good job. I have an uh, awesome boss. I have awesome coworkers. But I, I really think that my, my final goal would be to go out and help people. And I know I'm helping people through the channel, but I would like to be a professional in that field and actually uh, sit people down and maybe do interventions or something. Because you know what? There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. And if people can accept that, and people can accept Jesus into their heart. I know that there's a new path for them. And I just, I get so fired up about it, you guys. So 16 minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. I'm sorry. Most of you guys probably skipped through it anyways. But <laughs> I hope some of you guys stayed for the whole message. But go check out Justin True. I'll put a uh, link in the description below. And Daniel, I love you, brother. And the other people that are, are choosing recovery over addiction, I love you as well. And Rachel, thank you for sharing your thoughts with me earlier today and your testimony a little bit there. That's it's food for thought, and you're, you're really teaching us uh, in the comments. So I, I appreciate it, Rachel. And thank you all who, who stay and listen and subscribe and all that good stuff. But go check out Justin True. And uh, sorry I'm getting cold and getting the shivers. I want to get going. So uh, I got some stuff to do. I want to do some stuff tonight. So I love you guys. Stay true to God. Pray. Pray. Be honest. Be honest to God. And he'll be honest with you, and he'll show you things that you've never even dreamt of. Open your hearts. Choose, choose, uh, choose Jesus over anything else. Do not, do not look at the world and think that that the world has it has it all for you because it doesn't. In your heart, in God's word, that's where it's at. That's where we learn. We learn from the world as well, but we don't learn all the good things from the world. The world is is there's a lot of stuff happening right now. I don't want to ramble on. Stay true to God. Love you guys.